maybe a dragon doesn't isn't just a dragon. Maybe it's Donald Trump. You know, Donald Trump, or uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the 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 rising ocean. Maybe that's the dragon. Someone just uh-huh. you know? That's deep. It's <laughs> <Yeah, that's deep. laughs> <laughs> fucking deep. <laughs> This is your 24th studio album, Petrodragonic Apocalypse. You play so many festivals, a different show every night. How and when do you decide on the set list? Uh, we've actually um, been arguing about it in our private group for the past 30 minutes. So we're, we're on pause with the um, argument at the moment. Um, but, but yeah, we, just, we decide right before usually. We don't know what we're playing yet. We've just been arguing about it. But is it to build up tension for yourself, to keep it exciting? Yeah, keep it insanely exciting, you know. Like we might fight, me and Ambrose, yeah, yeah. Um, physically, um, you know. Physically. But it's all good. It's how you gotta do it. But uh, is there any form of consensus yet on the show for Lowlands, Ambrose? Uh, um, I think it's just gonna be pretty heavy. We've been keeping most of the festival sets pretty like rocking, I guess, and trying to just punch through it all. I think that's a lot more of the vibe rather than some like, I don't know, avant-garde jazz or something. But um, yeah, mostly pretty, pretty heady, heavy, petro stuff, yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, because you returned to trash metal. Uh, is there a specific reason for it? It's very fun. It's very fun. It's kind of, it feels um, like the gut instinct music that we uh, were always meant to make. So it feels good to go back there. So if, if you go to the core of King Gizzard, it's, it's actually trashy. <laughs> oh, I'd say it's uh, trashy, bit of techno, <laughs> a bit of house music as well. But um, yeah, it does feel good to play heavy music when we're on stage, I think. It's the, th- it's the thing that that usually we come back to. But uh, don't you think Lowlands also has its like warm, fuzzy sides? But maybe, I, I can imagine, the, 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 the audience is, uh, is longing for fishing for fishies. Hey, uh, look, you might be right, um, but it ain't happening tonight. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be drop B all the way, okay? Why are you laughing? Uh, because I was doing this. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. There, will, there will be no warm fuzzies tonight. I'm sorry, the warm fuzzies be have been cancelled. Warm cancer. fuzzies. It depends on how I'm feeling, but I'm I'm feeling pretty warm and fuzzy myself. Yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling like my core is made of thrash metal. But uh, does it often happen that you change the set list during the set? Yeah. 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 Usually it's cut like, song. it's usually this. Let's cut that song. It's, it's, we don't be like, oh, like, what if we did this? It'll just be like, we don't have time for that. And Lord of Lightning, which <laughs> you guys cut again last yeah, night, which has been an yeah, ongoing joke that keeps getting cut. Yeah, because it's shit. It's very, <laughs> it's very hard to like communicate in, in a traditional verbal sense on stage because yeah. it's just like way too loud and we can't hear each other when we try and talk and stuff. So we do sometimes, it's pretty common that a, a song will be thrown in to the set that isn't planned, but it will almost always be played in like a um, different way. It'll be sequenced in with another song, which means it's in a different tempo or, or um, key or some, something. But yeah, it happens pretty, pretty frequently. But do you have communication signals apart from... Uh, it's, like, it's like a deep, no, no, but, but truly like in a, in a non-sarcastic way, it's like a, it's like a deep body language thing. Yeah, yeah. Like you can we read... Kind of know. Like we'll, we'll know if like it's the song that's coming up isn't going to work or something and we'll just like I'll the moment I'll look and then I'll look at Stu or Ambrose or something and they'll be like yeah but always that <laughs> 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 yeah there's a, there's a, like a lot of kind of um you learn to communicate with each other on on like a 
sort of really specific way which you'd never use in everyday life. But it's, it's communication for sure. Yeah, yeah, as in, for example, in a, in a love relationship, oh, yeah. it might happen. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean it's, the, it's, it's the cliche, but being in a band is like being married, which you gotta, you know, you gotta respect that. How is the marriage at the moment? It's very healthy, actually. So healthy. Yeah. So attracted to all of you guys. Yeah. Still, our, after our, 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Our sex life is popping at the moment. Oh. Uh, oh, that's amazing. Well, I really, I really wish that for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, it helps. Uh, uh, the fans uh, are able to download almost every festival set you play and, and encourage them to make uh, bootlegs. Why did you decide on doing that? Um, I don't know. I just kind of think that everything in the world should be free. <laughs> <laughs> including our livelihood yeah <laughs> no it's cool it just lets Ouch. people <laughs> <laughs> yeah man it just lets people do cool stuff like music's music's art let people make art so I can yeah do yeah okay but I don't know you're, you're you need to eat and your children need to go to college and uh, That's why we're we sweet we can eat we're fine we've got 24 totally other albums that, that are yeah Making us some money, I guess. Yeah, we got we, we got we got enough money to eat. It's cool. It's not like a complicated um, equation. It just should be free, I think. Cool. It, and it cultivate it cultivates like people having it being invested yeah, in in the band, nice. like separate to just liking the music. If they feel like they can be involved on a different level, that's like really really sick, really special. That's kind yeah. of cool. Is, is, is there a community around King Gizzard? I think so, definitely. Yeah, it's, um, it's crazy. And I think, yeah, the bootleg thing and just like all the stuff, changing the sets up every night, uh, it's kind of just all goes towards just the big kind of ecosystem of the band. It's good. Are there, yeah. are there many people who uh, follow you around the world? Yeah, we see like, there would be, yeah, it'd be like hundreds. Couple, yeah, we see people like every night. Yeah, this guy follows us. Around the world a lot, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Galea, Ron Put, Money Hey! 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 Fortunately, he has a very nice vibe to him. He's not like a yes. creepy kind of. Here's our, here's our image yeah, at the moment. He's our eyes and ears of the band. He is creepy. <laughs> <laughs> he's what's at the core, really. <laughs> um, the, um, uh, the new album, Petrodragonic Apocalypse. Uh, of course, uh, addresses our situation, the, uh, the situation of planet Earth at, at the moment, but also dragons, witches, and uh, shit. Why was it? Why was it <laughs> important to address that? The dragons and witches and shit. Um, I mean, a lot of time it's easier to kind of tell a story if you don't root it in reality, because as soon as you do, it becomes instantly boring. <laughs> um, well, it's true, right? Like if you're just telling a story about mundane life, like it's just boring. No, I don't uh, mean. No, that's Stu's thing. It's and we're all on board with it as well. It makes things a lot more interesting. Just make it freaky, you know. Just freaky. That's why we can it's make and create different things. It's about the end of the world, but you know, maybe a dragon doesn't isn't just a dragon. Maybe it's Donald Trump. You know, Donald Trump, or uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the 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 rising ocean. Maybe that's the dragon. Uh -huh. you know? That's deep. Yeah, it's, deep. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking deep. <laughs> Why do you think there are so many uh, great psychedelic bands, especially from Australia and the part of Australia you're from? Um, because Australia is full of freaks. Because I don't know, we got better. I think we got better beer or something. <laughs> 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 nah, it's just being isolated, and you know, we grew up in a small community outside of the city and no one really knew what was beyond that and we kind of just got surrounded and all drawn to like one pub and everyone kind of for some reason thought they were a 60s mod in like the early 2010s and <laughs> I, don't, I think when you're like in the middle of nowhere you don't really know what you're supposed to do yeah or what the possibilities are or like you know much further than that so I think that's when you start creating stuff that's more raw and like true to like I don't know, the core of what you want to create from 
you know, that mm. moving, moving forward, I guess. I don't know. But also, maybe yeah. it's just a coincidence. Yeah. Just, just lucky, I guess. <laughs> Maybe it's just, everything's coincidence. Yeah, I, I think it is something. There must be some isolation thing about it. Like yeah, even like with like, Perth, like, look at like bands in Perth or like yeah, like Rose. Tame and Pond and stuff. It's the most isolated city in the world. Yeah, exactly. I don't know why it is psychedelic or whatever, but it kind of, I guess, is. I think we were just lucky enough to grow up with you know good friends and all have like a similar point of view of like the kind of music that we wanted to make from the get go. Yeah, and uh, coming from a place of isolation, uh, is it sometimes overwhelming? Being, for example, at Lowlands, one of the most infamous festivals of Europe, maybe it's def it's definitely cool. Like it's humbling and nice. In saying that, we have been constantly on tour for the last decade, so it does kind of feel like home as well. As as weird as that kind of is a sentence to say, but being on the road feels like our normal life. <coughs> now at Played this point like three times that third, time? third time here or something Feels, yeah we're pretty comfy but yeah it is nice it's a real pleasure <laughs> playing these festivals when you're strapped for decent ones in our own country <laughs> but uh yeah this one is uh got all got heaps of good stuff something place. for everyone yeah yeah it's one of the good ones good location oh yeah but, uh so what about techno joe loves techno well, uh, I think we're, sh we're sharing a green room. Uh, just just that, that wall, on the other side of that wall is Charlotte DeWitt, so that's cool for me. None of these guys know anything about it, but I'll drag them along later and we'll get some, some techno up our, up our ass. I might see you in the Bravo. Yeah. Also, oh, sorry, Party Boy 69 he's a Melbourne man. Yeah. He's, oh, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Haven't met him yet, but I saw him from afar and I wanted to go say hi. Um, so... I don't know if that's even a question. Could, 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 we, could we get him on stage with you? Hell yeah. He can come on stage. Lock it in. Lock it in. Lock it you in. want to come on stage? No. no. Like you want to come on stage. No, I, don't, I really <laughs> don't want to come on stage. Well, it depends on what you want me to do. It depends on what you want me to do. I, I can... Ask us questions during the middle of the set. <laughs> no, let's sing like Rage Against Machine song or something. <laughs> <laughs> Lock it in. Yeah. You're hired. Well, um, uh, let me think about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, once again, thank you so much. Pleasure. And thank have you. fun. We Thanks for having us. us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Bye. Bedankt voor het kijken naar dit interview met King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Tot de volgende keer.